So we're here to talk about um, the witness um, protecting uh, our embryologists and our patients. Uh, so to protect everyone that comes into the lab, you know, we uh, typically follow basic ASRM guidelines where we have clearly defined SOPs. Uh, we make sure that we do staff reviews so that everyone's following proper SOPs, and we also want to make sure that we have the right uh, staffing for our lab. So when we do procedures in the lab, we also want to um, protect our patients and our um, our embryologists. So we want to do have a witnessing um, system. So basically, the most standard approach is a double witnessing system where you have uh, two embryologists um, look at the dishes, tubes, or devices that are typically labeled with a patient's name and an accession number to make sure that the right gametes before we start a procedure. Um, and it requires two staff me members. A lot of clinics are actually hiring a lab assistant to do the witnessing for them. So the problems with a standard approach is that there are interruptions. So you have to stop someone from what they're doing to come over and take a look at what you're doing. Uh, there's distractions. So someone may be witnessing what you're doing but not really be paying all, like, full attention. Um, and then a lot of clinics have maybe only one embryologist or if it's the weekend, you don't have anyone to come witness for you. And so, and overworked embryologists can sometimes be working on autopilot. So we're lab rats, so we, our typical life in the lab, we work long hours, we have a high workload, we multitask, repetitive tasks, high stress, we have no room for error, and then oftentimes working alone, which again results in nightmares for an embryologist. So what are the risks and consequences of not having a proper witnessing system? So uh, the risk is every point of, or every procedure that we do, so it's a witnessing point. Um, the consequences for doing a, a wrong witness or using the wrong gametes or embryos for the patient is a loss of gametes or embryos, uh, loss of a baby, court and custody battles, or emotional distress. And for the clinics, the risk of litigation, loss of reputation, uh, loss of jobs, or the whole clinic, and emotional distress. So how can we minimize these uh, risks? Um, we want a laboratory that's fully staffed, and we also want to create a culture where mistakes are reported. Um, but the best way that we can minimize these risks is doing an electronic witnessing system. So the, we're here to talk about the RI witness system. Um, I have it in my lab. I, I love it. And so what it allows for patients to um, verify their information before any procedure, so you are including the patient in the verification process. Uh, you're able to track and document the process of a sample through your lab from start to finish. And you also allows uh, your technicians to work independently with a witnessing system as a sec second verification. It also um, automatically conform confirms any point uh, in the process where two tags come together in, um, in your lab. Also displays warnings and alarms when those samples don't match up. And it also can be customized to each clinic's SOPs and it's very easy to use. So uh, our witness um, representative will come into your lab and like monitor S your SOPs and create a uh, lab flow that's tailored specifically for your lab. So this is my uh, lab workflow. Uh, so you can see there's a, a ton of witnesses points for everything we do or any kind of application that we may want to use in a lab. So how does it work? So when our patients come to our clinic, they check in at the front and they're assigned an um, ID card. So when they come into the lab for the retrieval or the transfer, they hand us that card and then that card is put into a slide reader and then that workspace becomes that uh, patient's work, work, workspace. Uh, it uses RFID tags to be used on all two specimen cups and dishes. Um, and we also works with a Brady labeler, so you can print off uh, barcodes to put on your straws. So when you go to thaw that specimen, you just scan it with a barcode reader, and that patient's information pops up, and dishes and what have you can be tagged going forward. So. It uses RFID tags, so whatever dishes or cups or specimen uh, tubes that you use, there's a tag typically that will fit that product. And then here's the um, card reader. So the patient's given that card, 
And then when they come into the lab, we slide that card into that card reader, and then that workstation becomes that patient's workspace. Um, here's what the barcoding looks like. Um, it works on cryolocks, rapid eyes, whatever you may be using. Um, and then use the barcode scanner when you go to thaw that, that patient sample, and then all their information pops up so that workstation becomes strictly theirs. <clears throat> so, so it works by reading RFID tags on heated sensors that can be retrofitted to your uh, HUDs or your, any workspace that you have. And the patient information is displayed on a touchscreen computer so that you can see what's happening, what has been done to that um, patient's sample, and then you can uh, assign the next tube or the next dish to that patient. And then, again, alarms will sound if those things don't match up. So that's what the um, heated surface looks like that reads the RF, RF, RFID tags. Um, that's what the computer screen looks like. So if you are doing, for example, uh, using sequential media and you're using, you, you're doing your FERT check and you move to a cleavage dish, your FERT dish will show up because it's been assigned. And when you put the new dish over, you just say that it's a cleavage dish and then it automatically imprints that cleavage dish with that patient's name and all the um, accession numbers. And then when they don't match up, you get this bad warning, alarms and whistles go off, and then you have to actually type in what happened and why that tag didn't mess, um, match. So you have an electronic record of what happened with that sample. So the goal is to decrease the risk, and so that's what the RI witness does. And so it only allows one patient to be in a workstation at one time. Um, it allows the patient to verify information before the procedure, so it includes the patient in the process. And the uh, identification is automatic and instantaneous, so there's no disruption in the workflow. And then frozen samples are barcoded, so it makes, you know, make sure you're uh, thawing the right sample. It also is very time-saving. There's no need to have another witness or pull someone over. Uh, decreases distractions in the laboratory. Uh, alarms go off, as I said, and then it documents the tracking of all gametes and embryos from start to finish. And in our lab, we actually have a big TV screen, so we have a ticker, so we know we can look at the patient and it shows us where they are in each process. So at the end of the day, we know that everything's been completed. It also has analytics that you can use that's very helpful uh, for managing the lab. So we, it has the ability to scan media into the RI witness system. So when you receive your uh, media, you just scan it, and then all the lot numbers are recorded. So you know which ones are in queue, which ones are in use, and which ones have expired. And then those lot numbers are also assigned to each patient that use that lot number. So you can print off a report if you need to do that. Um, you also can see analytics of the procedures that are performed in the lab. So for example, you can monitor the number of procedures that were performed in a certain time period. Uh, you also can tally how many procedures each embryologist is performing. Uh, it records the time that each embryologist takes per procedure, so you can see who needs to like have some remedial training or speed up. Um, and you also can see where those procedures take place in the lab, so you know which workstation is used more commonly. You also are able to target workflow disruption, so you can monitor the number of administration assigns. You have the ability to manually override the witness. So you can see how many times that's happened, which also can show you if your embryologists are stressed or fatigued or what have you because if they're overriding the system, um, they're not following SOPs. Um, and you can also uh, use their statistics report to track the number of RFID tags and cryo bar barcodes that you've used for um, budgeting and making sure you have enough uh, product on hand. <clears throat> 